Okay, carrying on here. Um, the first bit here is going to tell us, you know, that um, transaction monitoring is is a risk based approach to business. So, just a reminder that once again, everything with an ACAMS is all about, you know, being the risk based approach. So, um, as it states here, transaction monitoring is one part of the K of the risk based approach to business. You know, so obviously the previous scenes, you know, they tried to sort of examine the importance of KYC. Uh, they're going back to as part of the risk-based approach. You know, you have financial crime, you have the KYC program, you have the AML program, so, and you have the transaction monitoring. So we're part of that here as a transaction monitor. Um, you know, all of this is part of the risk-based program, which obviously manages the risk. Um, and it mentions then you examine types of level of customer due diligence and how they work together to manage risk. Risk evaluation does not stop there. However, you now and out you will now need to look deeper at how the customer profile works in conjunction. So, this goes back to what I was saying before: how they're going to start basically putting everything together for a whole customer file. That's why they mentioned that. You know, it's so important to have all the correct initial information and the first onboarding. Basically, stating that the you know the main onboarding, the first initial onboarding, is the most important onboarding. Um, so, and then transaction monitoring works with that. So. This is still kind of more KYC stuff here. So it's gonna go through a sort of a standard customer profile structure and format here. You know, this changes per bank and, and depending on the software as well, but some things are required to be in there and that's mainly part of the financial action task force. They try to, they, they sort of provide the function and, and Wolfsburg Group as well, they provide the sort of framework for what is in a customer file. So a customer profile should be properly structured. Each organization will usually have its own template, a comments, that's what we've just been talking about here. A summary for senior management. Uh, obviously, there's gonna be times when, you know, with a customer profile, you'll have to sort of find out who the senior management are. Uh, this is definitely important with um, wholesale banking or merchant banking, where a lot of the, the businesses are, are sort of public companies and they're not necessarily banks, but you know, you have to, to do due diligence on senior management, the board of directors, you know, usually with any company, that's who you're doing. You know, if you have to onboard an actual sort of company, you're gonna be onboarding the senior management or the board of directors or the specific people related there. Um, number two, uh, the basic information of the customer. So that's probably just gonna be like legal name, extra um, address, primary address, registered address, all that kind of stuff, uh, domicile. domicile. Um, might be also a DBA, which is called a doing business as. That's when it's more of a US structure where you can be legally have a name, but you can sort of have like a, uh, I guess you could say a business name. Um, number three, the nature of the business and the purpose of the account. Now, I don't really see, you might, purpose of the account usually is just going to be a situation where you, you know, you just click what, you know, you have like a drop down box and you, and you have an item that gives you sort of an idea of what the sort of purpose of the account is. Nature of business is usually, or the, it could also be called primary business activities or business purpose, um, but it's usually uh, designed to basically give like a, like a paragraph on what the actual client does. So, you know, let's just say if you are you JP Morgan, you know, you would you would basically write, you know, you'd, you'd probably go online to, you know, the about. Usually, you go to like the about page on, on the, if you can find it or or any other sort of sources, and in some cases you might have to reference that. So. But you'd usually just sort of coerce it all together and it, it'll be like, you know, JP Morgan is a multinational financial services company based out of New York, you know, and then you could say, oh, it has all these divisions, has all these business types, um, you know, just basically that's it. Um, red flags that you discover, oh, that's, uh, well, obviously this would be part of the application for when you actually are submitting a file. So. Yeah, if you have a red flag, you would you would basically say like this is the red flag I found for this reason, and then you would try to back it up with evidence. So, uh, any issues of concern? Uh, these will expand. This is just anything. You're just normally just, uh, you know, any issues with the file. You know, you need to go forward. You can just write that down. So that's basically the summary. Um, obviously, it's starting to remind you here that you know, remember you should be objective in how you present the information. And obviously, it must be clear, concise, and precise. That's usually what you want with any sort of AML work. Is you want to be, you know, you want to be clear. You want to be correct. You know, concise. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to overdo it. And this is where, and you want to be precise. So that's precise means the right. You know, what is exactly you have evidence of. So this is why a lot of lawyers get into this industry because if you do a law degree, and I know it's expensive. And I know being a lawyer is not necessarily the greatest job in the world now, but 
you know, if you're a lawyer, you you learn to write extremely well if you do a law degree, you know. So and that's why some lawyers work in this industry and they're very good at it. Um, the summary section of the customer profile might be the only section senior managers read. Uh, this is not important. And it must also include any concerns you have and also recommendation for the next step. So usually that means you either clear the file or you escalate the file. Um, a third section usually includes the nature of the business and the purpose of the account. That includes how the account will be used, the expected value of the account, and the expected volume of the transaction. So this goes back to what I said. Usually you might have a, you sort of might do a blurb. My last bank I worked for, they did a blurb about sort of the purpose of business, they called it. So, um, you know, you basically would just write what the, you know, you'd usually go to the front office to get this information, you know, and they'll, they'll know what to do and they'll provide you the blurb. So... It basically just sort of states what you're expecting, you know, the amount of transactions, what products they could be used, whether it be a credit facility, whether it be a derivatives account, you know, it could be anything. Um, uh, a fourth section might include red flags related to jurisdiction or geography risk or political risk. Uh, you know, this will include name streaming against the sanctions and against the sanctions lists. Obviously, um, you usually have name screening, which you have a software, and sanctions risks is, you know, if you're in the United States, you'll use the OFAC website. Uh, yeah, look, this is, you know, something, you know, not too important related to, to transaction monitoring. But, you know, obviously, if you have if the onboarding stage of the customer identification program or the KYC here, you know, if you have any red flags, obviously, like if it's, you know, if the business is based in Iran, well, that's going to be some issues straight off the bat. That's what it's talking about here, basically. The final section will elaborate on issues of concern. Remember, this was summarized at the beginning of your report. Highlighting the big issues, say more, each one such as red flags, negative news, irregularities or exceptions in the research process. Now, usually if you're an analyst, whether you be a transaction monitoring analyst or a, um, or a KYC analyst, you're just going to go, th you know, if you have a major issue like this, you're probably just going to escalate it straight away. Uh, but obviously someone more senior will, will eventually have to make a decision based on that. Uh, process litigation. Litigation is always going to be a tricky one because there's so many companies, especially in America, so many organizations are, are constantly suffering litigation. You know, if you type in, you know, let's just say you type in BMP Paribas into Thomson Reuters World Check, which is a negative news check, you're just going to have all sorts of negative news that are going to come up. But it doesn't really, you know, it, it, it's it's not really necessarily relative. Uh, regulatory issues, reputational concerns, everything you found that is relevant and important. As a reminder, your report must include the source of information. So this is not just sort of a, a like this we've pointed this out before. This is not just necessarily a situation with regards to, um, you know, your source of information. Um, you know, just as good practice, it's just you need to have evidence and document your search. Basically, it's it's part of an AML program. If a hyperlink is available to that source, include this is just yeah. If you want to include a hyperlink in the reports, so the readers can click easily. I've never seen anyone actually do that. So that's basically the sort of, you know, the, the, fuss, the, the, must, the sort of the crux of a CIP, KYC. Transaction monitoring, ongoing review. So it's going to talk about here that once you do the initial, the initial onboarding, uh, you know, there's going to be an ongoing situation. So transaction monitoring is the scanning and analysis of historic transactions, data for potential money laundering or efforts to breach economic sanctions. This is largely an automated process with a system that generates alerts based on rules or customer behavior changes. So, you know, you, you're never going to fully get all the transactions you're only going to have to go for the alerts and the alerts will have to be cleared. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is just artificial intelligence and machine learning. It just, I know they are involved, but let's be honest, it's not taking off as big as people thought it would. I'm increasingly used to, to, this is just, you know, buzzwords increasingly used to ensure the alerts generated are true alerts with minimal false positives a false uh, well obviously you need to know what this is a false in fact this here if you ever want if you're actually interested in if you're actually interviewing for a position this is a question they'll ask in an interview to make to see if you've done any experience or any research with financial crime they'll ask you what a false positive is a false positive is an alert which is considered acceptable but not a true flag Analysts review these alerts and either escalate them or close them as false positives. Customer profiles need to be maintained and updated over time. Your organization's risk-based approach will determine how often, however, some e events trigger a refresh. 
So yeah, some events will trigger refits, such as maybe uh, a change in the customer or a brand new product or a new office. And that basically means you have to do a reassessment, uh, basically re-onboard the client uh, with a bit of less stuff because it's not the initial onboarding, but you will have to do a reassessment even sooner than scheduled. For example, if your organization files a suspicious activity report or a SAR related to the customer. So obviously it's saying here that most people, mo I mean obviously most banks will follow this, that you may have to do a reassessment if a suspicious activity report is, is done on the customer. Common approaches to transaction monitoring include the creation of in-house customized transaction monitoring systems or engaging a third party vendor to assist with the development and implementation of automated systems. These systems work on the basis of defining what normal behavior is for the customer segment and flag any transactions that do not fit with normal behavior. Financial institutions using a risk-based approach to transaction monitoring should consider the size of the institution, the products offered, and the features of these products when designing transaction monitoring rules. Okay, well, as a transaction monitoring analyst, you're probably not going to be doing too many of these rules, but uh, once you get more into it, you might be heavily involved. Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be a question on that, though. I don't remember that. Your organization should have policies and procedures for monitoring transactions for suspicious activity. That's just normal. These should specify the parameters and thresholds that are in place to trigger an investigation. These policies should be reward, regularly reviewed and updated the account changes and enhancements in the monitoring rules program. Um, customer profiles need to be refreshed and updated over time. Your organization's risk-based your risk based approach will uh, determine you know sorry, the organization's risk based approach will determine how often the jurisdiction allows low risk customers might be reviewed every so I've mentioned this before basically low risk customers might be only have to be reviewed every three years uh, anything you know technically medium moderate or two years this depends on the policy high risk has to or enhanced due diligence has to be reviewed every year uh, sometimes moderate customers will review it every 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 year Four or every three to four years, unless never otherwise triggered by outside information, uh, the, all clients now will be reassessed every few years. Higher risk customers might be reviewed annually, the periodic updates, even the customer that does not change this type of volume of business with your organization. Certain events might trigger a refresh of the customer profile even sooner than scheduled. For example, if the customer expands or changes activities such as a new line of business or a new way of using existing products, we talked about this before. So any major change in the customer relationship, you need to do a new reassessment, essentially.